Shalom. Shalom. This is your brother Amawan Ayabad and the brother Rawar Shapar from the GMS Miami camp. And we're going to be going into a lesson about um, how in this truth of ours um, you're going to go through affliction. Okay? And if, if you are to be delivered, you're going to have to endure through that affliction. Okay? So, um, before we go any further, we're going to go ahead and give our honor and glory and praise on two. Yahweh ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai, ba Hashem, Kakadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who taught us this truth and Ruel. Salutation and citations to the brothers out there that are laboring and pushing this truth in truth and in sincerity and in charity, and risking their lives and their freedom to do so. To you we say Shalom. To the Akiba, to the Aqua, that will be your brothers and sisters. Adawan Ratazada to say, Lord willing. Hopefully, by the end of this lesson, you be edified. So once again, you know, in this truth, in this thing of ours, okay, you're gonna have to endure affliction. You're gonna be afflicted, and you're gonna go through affliction. Okay. So open up with what you got, brother. This is the book of First Peter, chapter two, verse nine. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should shew forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Right, so that scripture right there through the spread, I brought that out just to show you how, you know, the Most High, you know, called you into this thing. So when you come into this thing, meaning this thing of ours, the truth, okay, when you come into this thing, okay, you're going to go through affliction. You see what I'm saying? The Most High brought you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You see? So now you in this thing. You in this truth. But being in this truth, you're gonna have to go through affliction. Get um Matthew 22 and 14. Okay. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. That's it. Many are called, but few are chosen, right? So when you get into this thing, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna go through affliction. Get Matthew uh, 24 and verse uh, 13. Okay, you're gonna go through affliction. But the scripture tell you right here. Go ahead. This is Matthew 24 verse 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. But he that endure to the end, you're gonna go through things, man. You gotta go through it to get to it. So affliction is gonna come. Okay, you understand the scriptures say Acts uh, 14 and 22 cons confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to con continue in the faith and that we through much tribulation shall enter into the kingdom of the Most High. So it's going to be by way of tribulation, okay, and we're going to go through affliction also because remember we went through affliction in um, ancient Egypt. This is not nothing new. Okay, the, the angel the Lord appeared unto um, Abraham in the dream and told him to say, know of a certainty that uh, 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 our people will go into captivity for 400 years and going to be afflicted, you know, but they will come out with great substance. So it's no new thing under the sun from them time there, you know, until now we're still being afflicted, man, you know what I'm saying? From the time of King David, King Solomon, when we had sovereignty, okay? After King Solomon, the, the, the kingdom was rent. Just to give you a little history, the kingdom was rent into two under Rehoboam and Jeroboam. Then you had the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, which is a prophecy within itself, showing you the scriptures say, any kingdom divided against itself or any house divided against itself cannot stand. So that's a, that's a prophecy within itself. After that, Israel was through, man. We went into captivity after captivity. The northern kingdom went into captivity under the Assyrians. And then the southern kingdom went into captivity under the Babylonians. Okay. Then after that, we was in, under the Medio Persian Empire, the Grecians, the Romans. Okay. Being afflicted, being uh, 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 contributaries. Okay. To this very day, this is the revised Roman Empire, uh, Empire right now, aka America. The scriptures say Baruch 3 and 8. Yet this day, we are in our captivity where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse. And we are subject unto payments. Okay? Alright? According to all the iniquity of our fathers. So yet this day we are in our captivity. So from no new thing under the sun. Okay? Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. 
we still being afflicted that is very there. But why? Because we transgress against the Most High. Okay, we, we're supposed to be keeping the law, statutes, the commandments, and our people, they're rebelling against the word of the Lord. You see? So that's the reason why, you know what I'm saying? We're being afflicted because we transgress against the Lord. Get Nehemiah chapter 9. Nehemiah chapter 9. And you're going to read from verse 6 to verse 13. Come on, this is the book of Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 6. Though, even though our Lord alone. Oh, so thou, like, thou. Uh, Thou, even thou, our Lord alone, thou hast made heaven, the heavens of heavens, mm -hmm. of all their hosts, the earth and all things that are therein, the seas and all that is therein, and thou preservest them all, and the host of heaven worshipeth thee. Thou art the Lord, the Most High, who didst choose Abraham, and broughtest him forth out of your of the Chaldees mm -hmm. and gave us him the name of Abraham. Right. And found his, his heart faithful before thee and man this a covenant covenant with him to give thee land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the per Perizzites, the Jesuite the Jesuites and the Gergeshites Gergeshites mm -hmm. to give it, I say to the seed and has performed thy words for thou art righteous. Right. So the Lord told Abraham, you know, you know, he chose Abraham to be that 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 righteous, faithful seed like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That he said he's gonna he made a covenant that he's gonna give the the, 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 the the land unto his seed, okay, for an inheritance. You see? Read on. And did us see the affliction of our fathers in Egypt. Right. So going back to Egypt again, okay, that the time of Egypt um the time of egypt was uh that was before Salakia. no read that line again and did us see the affliction of our fathers in egypt and heard us their cry by the red sea right you see showing you that we we, we, were, we were afflicted in, in egypt and in ancient egypt that was a very long time ago but the lord made the covenant with with abraham read on and shoot us signs and wonders upon Pharaoh and on all his servants and on all the people of his land for thou knewest that they dwelt, they dealt proudly against them so didst thou get thee a name as it is this day right because Moses uh, Abraham Abraham had that faith man okay he, he left he left for the uh, he left for the uh, Ur the Chaldeans not knowing whether he goeth but he had faith and he followed the Lord you see that was the 13th verse no. read on and thou didst divide the sea before them, so that they went through the midst of the sea on the dry land, and their persecutors thou their rest into the deeps as a stone into the mighty waters. Moreover, thou ledest them in the day by a cloudy pillar, and in the night by a pillar of fire, to give them light in the way wherein they should go. And thou camest down also upon Mount Sinon, and spakest with them from heaven, and gave us them right judgments and true laws, good statutes and commandments. There you go. So, to show you, the Lord hears our, our cries when we're, when we're being afflicted. That's why it, 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 it went back to telling you about ancient Egypt, because we were being afflicted in Egypt as a people. But the Lord brought us out of that by drowning our enemy, Pharaoh, and his army. You see? He's, he delivered us. He saved us. He brought us up out of the place. Okay, when we was in the wilderness, he came down to Mount Zion to speak with us. You see what I'm saying? So the Lord deliver us, man. You see? That was 13? Come on. Okay, get um, Job, Job the 36th chapter. You're going to read from verse 5 to 15. This is Job 36, verse 5. Behold, the Most High is mighty and despise of not any. He is mighty in strength and wisdom. He pers he preserveth not the life of the wicked, but giveth right to the poor. He withdraweth not his eyes from the righteous, but with kings are they on the throne. Yeah, he doth establish them forever, and they are exalted. Mm -hmm. And if they be found in fetters, and be holden in cords of affliction. See, so if you're going through it, you understand, it's a way to deal with it. If you listen and if you adhere to the, and obey in the words of the Lord, you're going to be good, man. You're going to have a prosperous life. 
But if you're going against the words of the Lord, it ain't going to work out well for you. Read on. Then he shows them their work and their transgressions that they have exceeded. Right. He, op he openeth also their ear to discipline and commandeth that they return from iniquity. Right. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity. There you go. So if you if you listen to the words of the Lord, if you are adhering to them and doing them, the scriptures say, be doers of the word and not hearers only. You see? Read on. And their years in pleasures. But if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword. That's it. If you ain't listening to the words of the Lord, this is how you're going to be in your affliction. You're going to be afflicted. That's the reason why we were afflicted as a nation, because we transgressed against the Lord. And that's the reason why, in this truth, you're going to have affliction. Why? Because we paying back for our sins in this life and in our past life. We paying back. We paying back until you how shall I come and get us, we're going to be paying back. That's why we afflicted. That's why we, we, we the lowly. We have to be humble and meek because we paying back for what we did. Read on. And they shall die without knowledge. But the hypocrites in heart heap up wrath. They cry not when he bindeth them. Right. See, even when they're being afflicted, they, they, ain't crying. they ain't crying because guess why? They just want to continue to be wicked. Read on. They die in youth and their life is among the unclean. He delivereth the poor in his affliction and openeth their ears in oppression. Right, that's it. He delivereth the poor in affliction, man. You see? Because the Lord, the, when the righteous cry unto the Lord, he hear them, man. Why? Because they are the righteous. He hears their cry. You see? That was 15, right? Go on. Get uh, Psalms 22. You're going to start at verse 19. You're going to read to 24. It says Psalm 22, verse 19. But be not thou far from me, O Lord, O my strength. Haste thee to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling from the powder of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. That's right. I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the congregation while I praise thee. Ye that fear the Lord, praise him, and all ye seed of Jacob, glorify him and fear him. All ye the seed of Israel... For he hath not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, neither have he hid his face from him. But when he cried unto him, he heard, My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that fear him. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord, and all the kindreds of the nation shall worship before thee. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among the nations. You read past 24? Go on. Go on, I figure that. <laughs> it's all good. It was that's edifying. It's spirit. It spirit. Yeah, that's a spirit. It's all good. You finished that last verse you was reading? Go on. Okay. Yeah, so the point is, the point was that when the righteous cry unto the Lord, he hears them, man. You see? Get Psalms 34 and start at 17. You read 17 through 19. It's the book of Psalm chapter 34, verse 17. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, mm -hmm. and deliver them out of their troubles. That's right. The Lord is nigh unto them that, that are of a broken heart, and save as such as be of a contrite spirit. Right, and that begins with, that begins with confessing your, your sins before the Lord. That, that begins with you uh, 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 coming before the Lord humbly. You see? You, you got to be remorseful for the things that you've done. Your, your, your transgressions in this life and your past life, you're supposed to be remorseful. You're supposed to feel sorry. And that's why the Lord is nigh on to a person like that who confessed their sins and they repented and trying to do better. Offend less. You see? Read on. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Uh huh. Yeah, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all, man. Out of them all. That's the point. He delivered them out of them all. You see? Get out, Joe, uh, so like Jeremiah 30 and 15. You see, because our people being afflicted, right? And the Lord, when they're when they going through it, the Lord basically said in this scripture, why, why are you crying unto me? You should know what it's about. Read on. This is Jeremiah 30 and 15. Why cries thou for thy affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thy iniquity. Right. 
because thy sins were increased, I have done these things unto thee. Right, and then but Jake, Jake act like he don't know why they they in low they in a lower state and why they in the, 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 at the bottom. They act like they don't know the reason for these things. When you read when you read the scriptures, it tell you why, man. But Jake, Jake act like Jake, Jake can't get it. Jake act like they don't they can't see why they're at the bottom. You, did you finish that scripture out? Come. Read it again. Jeremiah 30 and 15. Why criest thou for thy affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thy iniquity. Because thy sins were increased, I have done these things unto thee. Right. So it's the Lord who did it. Because your sins were increased. You see? That's why you're being afflicted. That we paying back for things we did in this life and in our past life. So that's why when you come into this truth, you're going to be afflicted, man. You see? You got to make up for the things that you did. You got to pay back for the things that you did. That's why the scripture speaks about uh, 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 you, you really taking the low now. So when the Lord returns, you don't be condemned with the world. You see? So you 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 being afflicted now, man. That the he, Hebrews the twelfth chapter go into that with the Lord, uh, uh, despise not the chastening of the Lord. Okay, he, he deal with you as as with sons, because if you don't do that, you would be a bastard. Which father doesn't correct his son? You see what I'm saying? Get um, Jose uh, five and fifteen, because the Lord say, hey, he, he turned his face away from you, man. You see. This is Hosea chapter 5, verse 15. I will go and return to my place uh -huh. until they acknowledge me their offense. Right. So if you don't acknowledge your offense, all this transgression that, that you did iniquity upon iniquity, but yet you don't want to confess it, you don't want to acknowledge that you transgress against the Lord, what the Lord said? Till they and seek my face. Read it again. Start from uh, the top. This is Hosea 5 and 15. Mm -hmm. I will go and return to my place uh -huh. till they acknowledge their offense. Right, till they acknowledge their offense. Uh -huh. Read on. And seek my face in their affliction. They will seek me early. In their affliction. You're being afflicted. Who is doing it? The Lord is doing it. In your affliction, you're going to seek him early. The Lord said you're going to hide his face. You don't want to repent. You don't want to confess your transgressions. What you think will happen? You know what I'm saying? What do you really think will happen? You're talking about the, 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 the true power here, man. The, 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 the father of all spirits. The creator of the heaven and earth. You think you have a chance that you think you can escape the judgments? You can't escape the curses. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15 on down to 68. That was meant for Jake, man. Okay? You so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans whose blood lineage goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The curses are real, man, and we live under those curses. You can't escape. Michael Jackson couldn't escape that. Okay? Floyd Mayweather can't escape that. All the money he got. You get to the line, they'll put you back in place real quick to show you just a nigger in their society. Because this is not our kingdom. You see? Go to Jeremiah chapter 3. So you got to confess your transgressions, man. That's why we're being afflicted. We're paying back for what we did. When we transgress against the Lord. Uh, start at 6 and read down to 15. And this is going into the nation of Israel. You know, how the Lord, he explains to you and tell you how uh, uh, Israel, meaning Northern Kingdom and, and Judah, Southern Kingdom, how, how they went off. Okay? And the Lord saying, come back, return unto him. Only acknowledge your transgressions. You see? Read on. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 3, verse 6. The Lord said also unto me, In the days of Josiah the king, hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel have done? Mm -hmm. She has gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree, and there have played the harlot. Right. Playing the harlot in the sight of the Lord, man. And Israel is married on to, to the Most High. The Most High is the husbandry, man. Israel as a nation is likened unto a calmly delicate woman, Jeremiah 6 and 2. It tells you that. And the Most High is the husbandry, man. Okay? And, and Israel played the harlot. That's what the Lord is saying. It's a scripture that tells you that uh, uh, if, a, if a woman go away from a man and get with the next man, shall he come back to that man? Shall, shall not that land be greatly polluted? But we played the harlot, man. Read on. And after I, 
And I said after she had done all these things, uh -huh. turned out unto me. Right. But she returned. If she returned not. She returned not. You see. So you see why. See why you're being afflicted. Read on. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it. Uh huh. And I saw on all one for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery. I have put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Right. So you, you would think you would think now. When, when Judah saw what happened to Israel, they would have they would have humbled themselves, cause cause Israel ran into captivity under the Assyrians. So Judah was supposed to humble themselves right then there after they saw that, but they didn't humble themselves. They end up going into captivity under the Babylonians. You see, read on. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, right? But went and played the harlot also. You see, read on. And it came to pass through the lightness of her whoredom that she defiled the land. And committed adultery with stones and with stocks. And yet for all this, her treacherous sister Judah have not returned unto me. Right. With her whole heart. Right. But faintly saith the Lord. And the Lord said unto me, The backsliding Israel have justified herself more than the treacherous Judah. Go and proclaim these words toward the north and say, Return, thou backsliding Israel. Right. So the Lord keep telling them to return. Return. Repent, man. Read on. Saith the Lord, and I will not cause my anger to fall of, to fall upon you. Right. For I am not, for I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. Right. Only acknowledge thy iniquity, that thou hast transgressed against the Lord. That's the point. Only acknowledge thy iniquity, man. Acknowledge your transgression. You see. That's what the Lord says. So if you're not going to do that, then you you're going to be in affliction. Read on. Against the Lord thy God, and have scattered thy ways to the stranger under every green tree, and ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Right. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. You see? That's 15? That was 14. Right, read on, read the 15 verse. And I will give you pastors according to my heart, right. which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding there you go man when you come back to the lord you turn back to the lord you're gonna set it up that you be prosperous that you have long life that you live and you have the fatness of the earth and everything is going to be set up to 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 to, to your liking why because you finding you found pleasing in the sight of the lord the lord delights in you he gonna take care of you you see but if you're not doing that what do you think it's gonna be go to uh baruch a scripture that comes to mind real quick go to baruch chapter 3 and read verse 13 you see, because if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, you 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 would have been crisp, man. You would have been good. You see, when you read the when you read the remember you have the, the curses and also but you have the blessings. The blessings start from one to verse fourteen. This is how it was supposed to be for what it was meant for us to have the blessings, even though we're gonna get it back in the kingdom. All right, but read that if you got it. This is the book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 13. Uh -huh. For if thou hast walked in the way of the Most High. Right, if we did walk as a nation in the way of the Most High. Uh -huh. Thou should have dwelt in peace forever. We would have dwelt in peace forever. You see? That's it. You can't go around that. Go to Psalms 51. Psalms 51, read verse 3 and verse 4. And this is King David, man. Acknowledging his transgression, it begins with repentance, acknowledging what you did, okay? And that's how the Lord slowly brings you up, deliver, you know, uh, builds you up, you know? To his liking, go ahead, and in, 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 in his timing. The Lord will uh, 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 exalt you in his timing, man. Go ahead. This is Psalm 51, verse 3. For I acknowledge my transgressions, right. and my sin is ever before me. Mm -hmm. Against thee, the only... Have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, mm -hmm. that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. When thou judgest. See, that's King David, you know, showing you that he come before the Lord, he acknowledging what he's done wrong. You see? That's what we have to do. Things written aforetime time was written for our learning. We have to acknowledge our transgressions before the Lord. Uh, repent and move on, move forward, man, offending less. Walk in the, in the way of the Lord. So you could live in peace forever. As the scripture that said Baruch 3 and 13. You see? So, like how we opened up in the beginning. The Lord brought us into this thing. Okay? 
into this truth, and this truth you're gonna be afflicted. Get uh, we're gonna close out on this. You're gonna read down. Get uh, Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, chapter two. You're gonna read down to uh, verse from one down to eleven. So you gotta come into this. You gotta come humble and meek before the Lord, man. Read. This is Sirach 2 and 1. Mm -hmm. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, mm -hmm. prepare thy soul for temptation. That's right. Set thy heart aright and constantly in endure. Right. And make not haste in the time of trouble. Right. You're going to have to constantly endure, man. All the afflictions, everything that you go through, you're going to have to constantly endure that. Because he that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Read on. Cleave unto him and depart not away. That thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Like at thy last end, that you may be increased. You see? You, that you be built up. Read on. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. It said, whatsoever. So, whatever you're being afflicted by, you still gonna have to say, call Allah, 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 Allah. That's right. You see? Read on. For gold is tried in the fire, an acceptable man in the furnace of adversity. Right. So, you're gonna come out better at the end. Now, I ain't want to make this too long, but we could have got that Hebrews 12, 12 chapter 2. That when I speak, it goes into that's the son of the father, you know? But go ahead, read on. Believe in him, and he will help thee. Right. Order thy way aright, and trust in him. Mm -hmm. He that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy, and go not aside, lest he fall. Right. Ye that fear the Lord, believe him, and your, your reward shall not fail. Right. Ye that fear the Lord, hope for good, and for everlasting joy and mercy. That's right. Look at the generations of old and uh -huh. see, did any, did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded, or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Right now, we know that number is zero, uh, right? <laughs> read verse 11, and we're we, we going to get that scripture in the Hebrews, man. Read verse 11, because the Lord is merciful. Read that. And whom did he ever despise that called upon him? For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, uh -huh. long-suffering and very pitiful. That's right. And forgiveth sins and save it in the time of affliction. All right. There you go, man. Save it in the time of affliction, man. You see? That Hebrews chapter 12, man. Start around about, around about the fifth verse. Okay? You're going to start where the verse, I think, is about around about the 11th verse. It speaks about peaceable fruit. It yielded that peaceable fruit. Start at like verse 5, I think. Hebrews 12 and 5? Yeah. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter twelve, verse five. And ye have forgotten the exhortation. That's it. Go ahead. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Right. So don't despise the chastening of the Lord, because that's for a reason. Okay. That's to keep you in line. To keep you. The, the Lord cares for you. That's why He's doing it. To straighten you up. To reprove you. To correct you. Read on. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. There you go. And scour scourges every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, the Most High dealeth with you as with sons. There you go. If you endure it, you have to endure it. You have to endure your affliction, bro. Read on. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, wherefore all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, we have had our fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Right. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits right. and live? Right. For they, for they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. That's right. For, for, our, own, for our profit, man. For our betterment. You see, so we could be partakers, be heirs of his holiness. Read on. Now, no chast chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Right, so no chastisement, no affliction fee seem to be a, a joyous, man. But in the end, if you endure it, it's going to bring forth that peaceful, peaceable fruit. You know, like as I was saying in uh, Sirach, the, uh, 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 we were saying adversity. Um, we were saying acceptable men are tried in the furnace of adversity, man. When you come up out of that, you're going to be that purifying goal. You see? You're going to be better. You see? So that's it, man. In, in this truth, you're going to go through affliction, you know? But what you're going to do? 
You got to go through it to get to it. Calling on the name of Yahweh Bashim Yoshai, you know, that he give you the spirit to endure until the end. That's right. You see? Scripture said, he that endure until the end, the same shall be saved. So we're going to end it there. Hopefully you were edified. We're going to give our honor and glory and praise unto Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai Bashim Rakakadash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of greatness, told the title of this truth and rule well. Salutation and citations to the brothers out there that are laboring and pushing this truth in truth and in sincerity and in charity and risking their lives and their freedom to do so. To you, we say shalom. Until the next time, shalom. shalom.